Hey, it's Saturday now. Saturday the 13th of February. And um, let me just try to uh, spend a few minutes with you. I'll tell you what, uh, this cold snap that we're experiencing uh, nationwide is something else that's really making it hard to get up. Um, today is the latest I've gotten up in a long time. I didn't get out of bed till 1030 and that's really unusual. I'm just going to flow. I have things on my mind to try to share in some records. Graham sent this to me. I just wanted to know if I had seen it. And um, Phil Collins' uh, Face Value um, d documentary. I hadn't seen this. Thank you. I still haven't watched it all the way through. But I think I have a very clear picture of who Phil Collins is as a person. He has my total respect as a former drummer. He can't play anymore. But when he was at his, on top of his game, he was one of the best rock drummers in my, to my ears. And um, I uh, knew better than to judge him about his personal problems with his marriages and stuff. And I just look at the people who, who have judged him in public and think to myself, these people don't realize they have shit on their shit on their shoes. Who are they to be judging Phil? It still goes on, you know. The other thing that um, I relate to is, I, you know, I can tell that Phil is a decent guy because the, he has said it publicly many times. The um, it, It's hurt him. It has psychologically damaged him. The uh, public backlash, he didn't deserve it. People make assumptions. It's funny, you know, we live in a world where facts just don't matter. I'll get to music, more music, but for example, the other day when uh, I first posted that Chick Corea had passed away, I had already learned from a past, from the past to d check as much as you can before you share information like that. Uh, there was one where I had to retract, where I had spoke too soon. Um, I learned from that. So when I posted on Chick Corea, it was because of the source, which was his family. And even with that, because I was one of the first to start posting on it, I have to deal with people saying this is a hoax. And it's interesting, well, you have just decided that it's a hoax. You have no information, and yet here you are declaring a fact and that's just, it's very dangerous, and that's the world we're living in. It just goes on. Crazy, crazy world. I have some records to show, but I want to talk a little more. I'm showing clips from, excuse me, from um, that remote um, concert that I did last year, Essential Fest, kind of in preparation for me um, in many ways, getting ready for um, this record to come out. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way of kind of um, unofficially promoting the idea that this music is about to come out. Ramps, the fr not the last clip, but the one before it, that people keep saying sounds like Kraftwerk, which thank you. That'll be on the album. Mr. Hall of Fame, it's nice to see that you're still with me. You know, I have, I need to check and see what you've been doing lately. I, every now and then I'll go and see what people are doing. But to respond to your question uh, uh, in the uh, in a first person, Mr. Hall of Fame asked me, you know, what do I like the best, playing real instruments or, or presenting my music with the uh, computer? To me, I like both. Both have their advantages. I, I love the interaction of playing music with other people live, playing instruments. That interaction, when it's when it's good, there's nothing like it. But I also have long wanted to have the ability to present my musical ideas like that with the computer. That's all that music. I wrote it, arranged it, mixed it sequenced it, 
so when I push the button that's me and then I use the keyboards there because it's live you know and I'll play a little bit but all the parts are there it's like it's what I want you to hear so um, I like both now I've done shows in Omaha where I'm playing live instruments to backing tracks I don't like that uh, when I was doing it with Egypt the reggae artist she's she's doing well in re in Jamaica we performed with my backing with backing tracks and me on guitar but that worked for me because she was singing the uh, the live interaction so I just wanted to just share that Mr. Hall of Fame hope you're doing well man so another great musician that is not a household name but a great jazz musician died Milford Graves and I'm when I looked at his discography I was a little embarrassed it's like yeah I know who this man is I barely have anything with him on it but I have this black woman by Sonny Chirac and this is a very uncompromising recording here um, Sonny is giving it up mad props to his black woman it's almost like a Yoko Ono record where he just is, just tells her to just go, and it's uh, it's a it's a tough listen, it is because she's wailing and the music is wild, and I wouldn't say free. It's definitely there as a platform for what is the woman's name? Is it Linda Chirac, his wife? To just wail yeah Linda Chirac <clears throat> with Dave Burrell on on piano and Milford Graves on drums and Norris Jones on bass very very intense um, rest in peace Milford I got an order in this week from Laserdisc I hadn't ordered in a while I took a chance on something there's a lot of new prog I'm not interested in at all. Won't buy it. Not interested at all. I'm not going to be buying some of that stuff. I see it and I listen to some of it online and it's, it's okay. Like Hawken is one that seems to be really popular. But bands like Dream Theater, no, I don't even want to listen to that stuff. It's overblown. They're good musicians, but uh uh. Liquid Tension Experiment, I can get into that. But this was one that I took it, I read about it and it said, okay, this sounds like what I want and it is Franco Leproni Integrati Disintegrati this goes back to the 70s obscure title I didn't know about it then but a uh, Wawa out of Spain good label dug this up this is really good this is in the area they put it in the same area as like um, Barrio, Franco Barriado and Ricardo Zappa it's like a one man playing everything but it's real um oh this is just what I like it's fanciful is not quite the right word but it like creates a world of its own and there's a lot of chords and colors used to create a world kind of a wonder world this is this is wonderful I love it this is just what I like to discover it's just really cool with that in mind if you happen to see this um, Jake I've listened to this again I really like this nostalgia landfill by world line traveler yeah I just have to ignore the vocals it's just not what I'm into you know please I understand it's your voice so <laughs> you know but this music and the fact that you this is really progressive to me this is true progressive music it does bring to mind the way that a lot of english canterbury music strikes me that it's trying a lot of different things but it's very tuneful and melodic and not un, not very predictable and not blues based so um, I really like this Worldline Traveler Nostalgia Landfill. 
I want to say again, Jake, thanks for sending it to me because I probably would have never, not have heard it otherwise and likely will never see a copy of this in the store in Omaha, Nebraska. Really good work. So here's something that's, I went ahead, it was a, it's a reissue of an item that I knew it was like, this isn't going to be something I listen to a lot, but it's an item that I've been interested in in wanting and uh, I went ahead and grabbed it Zweistein Zweistein Trip Flip Out Meditation this is a reissue of this album 3 LP set that came out in 1970 and it's a sound collage and the story this packaging is amazing there's a couple different stories about the making of this album and both are fascinating. I don't know which one is true, but the main person behind getting this going was a pop singer by the name of um, Suzanne Doucette. And the story in here is fascinating. Um, she's also um, apparently someone who's been on the cutting edge of the new age music. See, for some folks that term new age was something to embrace and for a while I was but it's like then it's like mm, I smell a rat here but anyway she's the person behind this record and this is just really a wonderful I'm trying to get the three LPs plus a seven inch and the story is is fascinating um, we talk about how this woman and her sister because of her pop background she had hits in Germany, in Europe, she had access. And so um, when this came out, apparently she hooked up with George Harrison and they stoned out at his place all night listening to this and he loved it. I can see that happening, I really can. Now, th there, this is at times kind of like Faust or Tangerine Dream. That's an actual mirror there in the middle and they actually give you give you an extra mirror on the inside part of this works and parts of this is just like well they just had time on their hands and they were making noise parts of it work and other parts it's like i have to skip over it's like okay i've done this i've done this this part is just a mess but as far as an item a package look at that i, I was like yeah i want that it's like a toy, you know, it's like an item. I like just sitting looking at it. So we're at 13 minutes already, and I hate the fact that a 13 minute video will take almost two hours to load up. So I'll leave it here, folks. I hope you all are doing well. I'm just gonna just uh, stay focused like this right now. The world is out of, is, is crazy. That's what I'll say about other things going on.